Welcome to Backstage with the Miskatonic Playhouse. We have with us this evening uh, John Hall, also known as Hedge, who is the author of Alpaca in the Sheepfield and the backstage manager of the Miskatonic Playhouse. John, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be on this side of the camera. And it's wonderful to, to have you here. Uh, we've got questions, uh, some of our author questions that we want to we want to find out about you, not just as the yeah. backstage manager of the Playhouse, but as a you are a community content creator. Um, so that's it. That's what we want to find yeah. out. Yeah. Well, full disclosure to the audience: we uh, recorded Alpac in the Sheepfield um, about a week ago. Then we recorded the author interview. Then we lost the author interview because we are well new to this, and now we're trying again. So let's see if we can get through these questions and make them. Uh, just wonderful and really a useful resource for everyone involved absolutely and no if one at first is, you don't succeed no one is to blame for losing that interview in any way shape or form no i didn't blame anyone i said we good good that's and that's that's let's go Let, add, on to the first question <laughs> on to the first question um so what are you most proud of with your scenario um I think the bit of the scenario that I'm most proud of uh, well first of all actually that's really simple is that I finished it um, from my perspective, uh, I was presently a d and author when I started uh, and entered the world of Call of Cthulhu, looking for a new platform, a new way of writing, running new different scenarios. And as a lot of people who get into um, Call of Cthulhu from Dungeons & Dragons do, I thought I had to do everything homebrew. So I began just trying to create things all over the place. But eventually i discovered the joy of writing short compact scenarios and one of the ways i did it was through our sponsor this week actually which is through the storytelling collective so the storytelling collective runs this write a scenario in a month thing and i signed up for it really unsure of what i was going to do but i thought this would be a really good way to go through the whole process of writing a scenario and i did so alpaca in the sheepfield was written in june 2021 as part of the storytelling collective and the thing that I found really enjoyable about that process was that I am a prolific writer. I write all the time. I write huge amounts. I write for my work. I write for fun. I write for Call of Cthulhu. But I rarely get it to a stage where I publish. And a big goal of mine right now is to actually finish that process. So the really fun thing, and the thing I'm most proud of a pack in the sheep field, put simply, is that I published it. Yeah, that's brilliant. And yeah, I, I remember, uh, I do actually remember in that, uh, write your first Call of Cthulhu uh, scenario by the Storytelling Collective. I do remember your scenario because obviously the, you've got that very unique newspaper um, uh, uh, cover for the scenario, really recognisable, um, which I, I do remember. I remember seeing it in one of the bundles. I remember seeing it as one of the titles being put forward. Um, yeah, so brilliant. Absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. Yeah, because you did the the same one as me for Prisoner's Dilemma. I did, yeah. Which is one of our up-and-coming uh, scenarios we're going to be running. For yeah, it is. Yeah, very exciting. Your debut um, as Keeper. Ooh, bit nervous, but um, yeah, I'll probably read it again before we do it. Um, at least once. Yeah, at least once, yeah. No, it's, I am actually very excited and being very nerdy about that, actually. Um, but yeah, it's cool. And it, actually, it's quite nice. There feels, I don't know, I think having a fellow storytelling collective write your first call of cthulhu adventure kind of you know uh a we've played your scenario brilliant scenario really really good fun and i got to play it as well and it was really really good fun um mm -hmm. and but you know also kind of you know just doing everything we're doing here at the playhouse it's really nice that 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 was a i suppose a catalyst. big starting point for a few of us the catalyst yeah really really good um okay this is a question that, that, that i like this is a bit of a pointed question so with uh, uh what would be your advice to future keepers of your scenario spoilers ahead <laughs> so the first thing about alpaca in the sheep field is that it's fairly short uh, it really has a runtime of between two and four hours mostly it's finishing in around about the three hour mark and one of the reasons for that is it's got this um chase scene the hunt which is the final act of the whole thing and the joy is that once you've started it you're sort of on a fairly straight and narrow pathway to the end although exactly how you get there is still wonderfully sandboxy as a result of that really take the time to enjoy the chase enjoy the hunt uh the chase rules for call of cthulhu are actually really good and a little underused and the 
book takes the time to explore how you can go about using the chase sequence. In R1, you were jumping over roofs, leaping from building to building, running through muck. You all went off in different directions. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. It was complicated. It felt really real and everyone was really, really enjoying themselves. Take the time to enjoy that. It's really a wonderful section and hit it when you're ready. So we had a very slow burn. We sort of built up, we built up and then we whammed into this action packed finale and it worked really, really well. I, for me, that that move, you know, we had this really, and I think it did, it started you know, in that really kind of classic, there's an, even a modern day set, setting as well, but there was a classic sense of investigation. There was a classic sense of, you know, that there is something here we're finding out, there's stepping stones to take. But as you said, when we hit that third act, not only was uh, as a series of chase sequences really really good fun to play but it felt really cinematic mm -hmm. with with people doing different things in different ways uh so i i really enjoyed that i as a big finale for for the piece i think it was really fitting and i think it really paid off with everything that the scenario had built up to that moment really enjoyed it um okay okay this next one uh is is again a bit uh, i like to well, if, if this was turned around and someone was asking me, I'd have to think about this. Is is there a Miskatonic repository community scenario that you would like to run? Uh, yes, actually. Right now, I'm quite interested in... Well, actually, I've actually... So I have two answers, and they're incredibly <laughs> cringy in the... But they're genuinely true, is I really want to get and run Dragon of Wantley, which is our first episode, run yep. by our very own Stu, who's our producer. Uh, and also, I'm no longer playing in it, so I can go and grab The Prisoner's Dilemma, <laughs> written by T.A. Newman. And mm -hmm. so, bear with me, it's not just uh, blatant advertising here. <gasps> it's not, uh, the thing is, I'm really interested in becoming a better writer. It's one of my main drivers, and therefore, I'm interested in amateur scenarios that are on a similar level to mine. So I'm interested in reading people who are on the same journey as me, making the same yeah. mistakes as me, seeing where they're better than me, seeing where I don't really stand up, seeing where I need to do in order to improve as a writer. And one of the ways I want to do that is read other people's scenarios that are similar to mine in many ways. One of the reasons why I'm really involved in this project is because of that idea. I want to work with amateur uh, progressing towards uh, professional writers because that's where I think I am. And so yeah. those scenarios that are really sticking out and really um, hitting the mark as high-end amateur scenarios is kind of what I want to be reading and playing with right now. Yeah. Do you know what? It's... I think that's a really, really uh, yeah, considered answer, considered way to think about what we do actually with, with the community content. And I don't mean us, I mean everybody that writes and contributes to what we call the community content. That idea of, you know, we, there is a huge opportunity here that when we play each other's material and we look at each other's material to learn tricks of the trade, uh, different author style types, how you do things, how you kind of, you know, like you said in your yours, there's a, you know, you look at the chase rules, which a lot of people have to say, and even in home games that I've played, I've had people go, right, hang on a sec, I've just got to check the chase rules. <laughs> it's it's a really good way to to expand your our repertoire or and individually as your repertoire as an author, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool, brilliant, really, really good. Um, okay. Um, what would you like to explore? And this might be loaded because there is something that's been released very recently, but what would you like to explore in your next scenario? uh in my next scenario well i just published a new scenario actually i really think it's that. a good opportunity yeah. to talk about that really good opportunity. i just published uh my latest scenario it's called secrets of the glen secrets of the glen is a seven to ten hour long confusing complicated little mystery that takes place in the northwest of scotland in a little glen you've never heard of and it was my first big idea when i got given the idea of writing investigative mysteries and uh, I'm really really proud of it actually and how it's turned out I put a lot of work into it I got a lot of help I got a professional edit edit from my friend Rubina Henze some of the maps were done by my friend Graham Patrick so some people really helped me make it something really wonderful and very proud of but actually to move a little beyond that what I'm interested in as a writer is figuring out how to write and tell good stories. And one of the reasons I'm interested in Call of Cthulhu is I think it's a really good way to tell a story as a group, specifically because you don't know how the scenario was going to turn out. So 
for me, a lot of the fantasy role-playing games, the general assumption is that you will succeed. So if you run the scenario, your characters are going to win. In Call of Cthulhu, you don't know. You could win, you could lose, you could TPK, everyone could survive. It's partially down to the roles, it's partially down to decisions that get made. And as a result of that, I find that a really exciting way to live, a really exciting thing to do. And I want to write stories that facilitate that, that give you options, that give you space to explore and make decisions and do the right thing or the wrong thing. And also within the context of horror, there are certain expectations people have. So for instance, Alpaca in the Sheep Field is a fairly classic horror scenario. Um, so it's a slow build and then really horrible things happen at the end. Boom, beautiful. But there's other stories you can tell. There's a more pulpy style of um, Cthulhu that's very popular right now. There's the, sorry, um, yeah. other ways in which it can be played. There's the more classic Call of Cthulhu where you do sort of win and there's the mind-bending weirdness. And there's uh, very, you know, very lethal king and yellow scenarios and all sorts of different things so you see a whole range and what, what i'm doing right now and what i'm interested in is exploring all those ideas and yeah that's what i'm trying to do with my next project so my next project is going to be it's going to be a whodunit oh yeah nice it's another little investigative style that i'd like to explore that's cool. That's nice. I like that. I like that idea. Everybody loves a whodunit. And I think putting it in this instance where you can play an investigator in that situation, yeah. in this familiar game that we know, but in a very unfamiliar, you know, I, I have to say, I, I really like the, the, you know, the idea that um, just that you mentioned that the, this next scenario is maybe seven to 10, seven to 11 hours. Mm -hmm. I've, I think that there's, there's a bit of a niche in the market there. I think there's so many, I think there's so much material out there that is uh, a couple of hours long. It's a good evening's entertainment, but I think in the community, we have got such good writers that having something that is a couple of sessions with your, you know, with your table, with your home table or whoever it is that you're playing with. I think, I think there's an opportunity there. I think to, you know, and you're obviously jumping on it, which is fantastic. Having that market, which is a, look, there's a scenario here. But because it's a more drawn out one, it's a more considered one, there's more to investigate, there's more to invest in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'd be really excited about that and seeing more of that in the community as well. So, yeah, brilliant. Really cool. Really, really cool. Um, oh, I do like this one uh, because this is something I, I wonder. When I see material coming out, I often wonder about this. Where do you get your inspiration from? So I read a lot and I play a lot um but really what in I get inspiration from all the way in the place uh, there's the, one of the one of the issues with this answer is everywhere <laughs> uh so um Apaka and the sheep field is written about um a small island called Dalbri which isn't a real place uh there is an island of Cumbria just off the west coast of Scotland which is a bit larger and the town's a bit bigger than the story of Dalbray, but uh, if you read it and you know about um, Cumbria and Millport, the town, then you'll sort of get where I'm coming from. And I was inspired by going there. It's one of the ways in which I'm really inspired is places. So Secrets of the Glen is inspired by uh, Glen Tay, where I spent quite a lot of time growing up as a kid, and Glen Tarden, where I visited quite a lot as an adult, and I really love it up there. And then I just sort of mishmash the two of them together into this beautiful old story. And so I'm inspired by that which is around me. So the other big thing that is around me a lot is fairy tales. So Scottish fairy tales in particular. So I write what I know. So I'm Scottish. I live in Edinburgh and I write stories about Scotland. And then I, this is something that I find uh, very personal that I often find a little confusing with others is that I really can't imagine writing anything other than modern. And actually I struggle to write outside of Scotland <laughs> because that's what I think about. And that's where I'm living and that's where my lived experiences and that's where things I can reference are. Yeah. But beyond that, I'm also interested in different telling different styles of stories. So obviously we were just talking about the fact that I'm tried to write a very classic horror story in Alpaca and the whodunit story and then um secrets is a, a mystery uh, my other scenario politics as usual is a haunted house so i'm taking these quite simple tropes that um we we kind of all know and have expectations around and then i'm trying to write my version because i'm trying to become a better writer 
Mm. And because I'm trying to become a better writer, it's a lot about playing with things that exist. People often say that the best uh, writers and the best filmmakers tend to come from horror because if you do horror wrong, it's no fun. So it's a really good place to hone your craft and become okay. good at what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I really feel the same way about it. So I'm sort of exploring the space and trying these things out and just trying to understand how these things work. And then of course I read. Uh, so I'm really into Stephen King right now and Neil Gaiman. I've always been Neil Gaiman. Yeah. And then I'm a huge, huge Pratchett fan classically, which isn't very horror until you realize that actually Pratchett is a little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, but you can, I mean, his, you can see it when you see the way I play, which is a little bit silly and a little bit irreverent. And that's all coming from those sources. Uh, yeah. And then I know that you're in the, what the books you're reading right now, the Arkham. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at my bookshelf over there again, similar to you similar reading list in terms of definitely Stephen King uh definitely Neil Gaiman um but I've actually started picking up yeah the uh the the Acolyte uh, Arkham Horror new published series that's coming out uh and I have to say yeah we, I've been chatting to a few people about them so I have to they're really good they're really good oh sorry that was my watch I should probably do that again your watch my fantastic. watch uh no let's just keep your watch in that's fantastic oh, but it everyone just... should know that your watch talks to you but it's when the watch says i don't understand you it just sounds like everybody else in my life that's the that's the thing it's just an extra voice going i don't understand what you're talking about have you ever seen the uh the lift sketch 11 a voice activated lift in no. scotland oh yes i have yeah 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 no one can understand uh, the voice yeah yeah <laughs> uh it's a beautiful sketch it's uh so i have a, an east coast uh scottish accent which is significantly easier to understand than the west coast scottish accent which is much harder to understand and so when you uh write these things you play these games i put these accents on occasionally i get told i need subtitles because i tend to get into a little bit <laughs> um i think we're just going to carry we were, on should we just carry on we were talking about books uh i basically i was going to say that you've been so positive about them that i'm genuinely going to pick them up and have we chat check Oh yeah, and I have to yeah, I have some are better than others, but I have to say as a whole, the the series that they've released, um, these these new Arkham horror novels, they're really good. And there's there's uh, they've just released a couple of larger collections with a series of short stories, which I'm really enjoying actually. Um, I am dabbling with a few other things, but I keep going back to them because I just I'm just finding listening to somebody else's voice within the Call of Cthulhu world, I'm just enjoying that. But cool. I absolutely echo everything you've just said in terms of where you live what you know I'd, I'd i'd be interested to speak to some people who write about things that are so far removed from where they live and, and what they know beyond research i'd be really interested to speak about that because i feel uh, slightly akin to you john in terms of that i live in the southwest uh, of england i live on the coast i write about a fictional coastal town that i've made up in the southwest and then i link it to some real places like Dartmoor um so yeah I I uh and I enjoy doing that because it's your it's your home territory and it's something to celebrate isn't it um yeah, yeah brilliant okay that's really cool thank you uh, I suppose our last question then for you this evening is and this is this is something that I I think everybody should be able to have a voice on um and I know there'll be some contradictions but this is a great question. Uh, what advice do you ha have for the rest of the Miskatonic repository community out there? Does anyone else notice how much Newman spends talking about how great the questions are? It's almost like he wrote them. <laughs> he just wants you to know how hard he worked on those questions. That last question was a really good question, everyone. Just a really good question. Uh, this is the behind the scenes of the Miskatonic Playhouse where uh, Hedge teases Newman. That's <laughs> how it works. Pretty much. Advice to the rest of the community. Um, so I am a parkour coach by trade um which is an odd way to start this conversation but bear with me uh, <laughs> and as a result of that i um i'm a teacher i'm a coach educator i know you're a teacher too and one of the things that's really important to me with that regard is having a growth mindset and having a, an understanding that you are not necessarily here to win you're here to get better and improve yourself so when i'm writing i'm not trying to sell the most copies in order to win a prize or a badge, a literal badge in the case of drive through RPG. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to do is tell really interesting stories and get better at telling interesting stories and therefore creating really awesome experiences for myself and the people around me. And I think if we think about 
the way we play in that regard and we think about the scenarios we write in that regard i think we'll create a community that creates some amazing writers over the course of the next five ten years um and the way we do that is we try and create the best scenarios and tell the best stories we possibly can so what I'd say to all the other writers out there is that that's what I'm going to try and do. And I hope you join me in that wonderful, wonderful process. Oh, a lovely sentiment. And by the process of us wanting to be a community of better writers, those little uh, uh, carrots on sticks that drive through RPG have for us, uh, they, they're going to be a byproduct of better writing, aren't they? Because people are going to want to play those scenarios more because they will begin to sell themselves you know that's that's yeah. that's kind of the idea and that's not to and that's um i kind of want to put a little addendum on that on that very idea that's not to say that marketing isn't valuable and sales isn't viable because you should put your product in front of people so like one interpretation of that could be me rubbishing scenarios that sell well i'm not actually in order to be a good scenario one metric has to be it is sold and people buy it, people play it, and people review yeah. it. Um, so to get that actually happening is part of the puzzle. It's not the only part of the puzzle because the second part of the puzzle is also that it is a good scenario and yeah. therefore you build a reputation as a really good writer. Um, but yes, part of it is that sales process and that does need to happen. But don't make that your outcome, make that the byproduct, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And actually, with our sponsor this evening, the Storytelling Collective do actually run a marketing program, uh, which I'm going to have a dabble at myself at some point because I'm just really interested to kind of see it. And I know there's a few other people within the community that have had a go with it and they've got nothing but positive things to say about it. So it's another tool to the skill set. Um, yeah, brilliant. Well, uh, John, thank you so much for joining us tonight uh, backstage at the Miskatonic Playhouse. And we thank you very much, not only for your scenario, for running it for us as Keeper. It was bloody good fun. Really, really good fun. Uh, I would absolutely recommend it out there, community. It is a really nice kind of type, what, uh, you know, kind of a uh, uh, one-shot scenario that you can run, that you can really get your teeth into, and you can absolutely entertain your table. Some fantastic NPCs to, to uh, interact with. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, On that point, if I could just... Uh, it's course. actually, I think it's a really good scenario for introducing Call of Cthulhu to people because it's quite sandboxing. They can run around and explore and there's a little mystery, but also it's got fairly set beats. So it's, um, I'm not going to say it's, you know, quite haunting level, but if you do want some to bring a new group into scenario, it is an option. And a modern day scenario as well. So if you're looking for that alternative that is modern day, that is a good introduction to what we're doing here. There you go. Alpaca in the shoot field. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much, community, for watching, for listening. Uh, do follow our socials. You can find us on most things at Miskatonic Playhouse. And be well, take care, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. As we draw the curtain on tonight's performance, we thank you for joining us and look forward to inviting you back to the Miskatonic Playhouse. In the meantime, you can also find us in the links below. And if you'd like to submit your scenario for us to play, email miskatonicplayhouse at gmail.com.